everybody, it's Austin. We're back in the garage today and I'm super excited about what we're installing. I got sent a light bar that I've wanted to put on the truck for a really long time by a company called uh, Novasite and I'll put their link down below. Um, but as a part of that light bar, I had to also order some uh, a wiring harness and a panel to get that put in the truck. You know those accessory panels that all the cool off-road rigs have that allow you to run your ditch lights, your light bar, compressor, you know, cool things like that. That's what I'm going to be installing so I can run the light bar. So I've been out finagling with the truck. That's why I'm all hot. Sorry about my look, but I was really intimidated by getting the wiring through the grommet in the firewall because it's super tight. I didn't want to drill a hole in it, but I think I got it started. So I'm going to show you guys where I'm at and bring you along on getting this wiring harness installed so we can go ahead and just plug in this light bar. So stick with me and I'll bring you along and hopefully it helps you guys out if this is something you're wanting to do on your own vehicles. So here's the switch panel that I'll be using. Um, this is all metal, got six options with a fuse box that'll go underneath the dash, all pre-wired, which is super nice. And it's got some fuse panels in here that will allow you just to hook right in to that. And then everything should work as it's supposed to. So I just have to figure out getting this cord through the firewall and then we'll be ready to rock. All right, so here is the switch panel that I purchased separately from the light bar. It is a six gang system, uh, and that just allows you to have six different options that come with the pre-labels of different things you could have hooked to it, which is super cool. And it's really a simple install. I just, the only thing hanging, holding me back is getting this wire through the firewall. That's the, the one issue. So. Um, it's pretty thick wire and that's kind of why I was a little bit hesitant, but once you get that run through the firewall, you hook this to your battery and then you can hook all of your panels, uh, your lights into this. So it makes it really easy and should be relatively simple. Um, I think this looks super sleek. You can mount this up in the truck, up on your dash. Um, it comes with adhesive or some brackets that you can mount it to your dash but I'll probably just stick it because I don't want to drill into the dash so stick with me on this install and I'll bring you guys along this is totally a DIY um, beginner level install I've not done I've done wiring in cars but um, as far as hooking up light bars to fuse boxes um, and things like that I've not done that before so I'll try to keep it very um, well explained so you guys know what you're needing to do if you do this in your own vehicle and pray that we can get this wiring through the grommet in the firewall. That's my main task. All right, so here's the engine bay of my truck. And this is where I'm gonna set that fuse box right on top of this fuse relay. There should be enough clearance uh, with the hood shut that'll allow it to just come right through there. That's the grommet I'm needing to bring the wiring through. Come right through there and then uh, just run right up to the fuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up on the other side and see if I can force it through. <sighs> it's kind of a pain, but if you guys have these running boards, the RB20, Go Rhino RB20s, you can sit on it. So that's pretty nice. So check out that video if you wanna see the install on my truck. All right, so I've got it taped up and that is super thick. So I'm really worried it's not gonna push through and I don't have anybody to pull from the other side, but. We're going to give it a go. Say a prayer for me. Well, that didn't go as planned. An hour and a half later, soaking shirt. Couldn't get it through the grommet. Ended up cutting the wiring cable on accident as I was trying to cut open the grommet to get it to fit. So, this will be a battle for another day. I'll see you then. Hey everybody, it's Austin. We're out here working on the truck again, and I started this process many months ago trying to get my aux beam fuse panel 
installed in the truck so that I can run a multi switch um, power box inside the truck uh, panel button. I'll show you guys. And uh, I cannot get it threaded through the firewall. So I'm working on that currently. Um, I was able to get the fuse box all wired into the truck and got the light bar put on which I think looks pretty darn cool. And now we're gonna go ahead and try to get this through the firewall. So let me show you what I'm thinking. We're gonna take our second attempt to get that done because the first time I failed and thought I cut the wiring harness to the truck, but thankfully I just cut the cable that I was trying to pass through. Expensive mistake, but at least it wasn't the wiring harness to the truck. All right, so as you can see, my aux beam type uh, fuse boxes right here which allows us to run uh, the fuse panel like this and um, wire in the light just into the terminals there so that it is fused and has a relay so we get that on there and then I just double sided taped it to the top of the fuse box which I'll probably change to velcro at some point because the with the heat of the summer and the engine this has been on a for some long drives so far and it's not been an issue but i'm just worried that the sticky is going to fail so um this is the cable the size cable we're trying to run through the firewall back here in this grommet which you can see i have cut and destroyed a little i mean not destroyed but definitely mangled trying to get it through next to the e-brake cable which comes out by your gas pedal but apparently there's a nipple right down there beneath the wiring harness that you can go ahead and cut and that will allow you to pass through a cable that's about that size well to pass through any wiring but that's the cable i'm trying to pass through so stick with me we'll see if we can get that passed through there is not enough space to work back here but we'll try to make it work all right so we finally got the little nipple snipped on the bottom of the grommet you can see where that gold wire hangers coming through. And I put that through from the other side and you can actually see the hole where the grommet, uh, the nipple was, and it's not very big. It's maybe the size of this wire, but I'm super nervous that this end is not gonna fit. So I don't know what we're gonna do. Um, hopefully we can get this to fit through. I'm gonna wrap it in some tape. That's not focusing, there we go. I'm gonna wrap it in some tape, which this is not slick tape. This is like non-sticky electrical tape. And then put some Vaseline on it and hopefully it will go through. Wish me luck. This is the part that I keep having issues with. All right, so I've got it taped up and a little bit of Vaseline on there. And I'm just hoping it'll fit down in there because that is way bigger than just like a normal wire. So we'll see. All right, so this is where the hole is coming through. You can see it is not very big. And we're gonna try to force it through. So I'll try not to mess up the wiring for the truck. So I'm gonna try to pull and then go around the other side and push it. So we'll see just to the left of the e-brake right here. Right up there. You have to peel back the carpet a little bit. I stinking did it. I got it pulled through. Oh my gosh, that was a pain in the rear. Duke was here with me. My number one fan. That was super hard. Let me show you where it came through. We just started pulling with the hanger and I could see where it was trying to bulge through and just took a little razor blade and just snipped at where it was bulging and it was able to pull through the grommet. So I got it. Let me show you where it came through. All right, so as you can see, it's wrapped in tape here and it was able to pull through right there, right through the hole where it was pre-opened. All right, let's get this unwrapped and hopefully we can get this wired and in place. Now we get to determine where we want to put the, the panel for the buttons. I'm thinking, I think it may be right here somewhere, but I'll show you guys what we're working with and maybe we'll have some other options. Not really sure. 
this is the back side of that nipple, which is the tunnel in which you can feed wires through. I just ended up ripping it all the way through. So, well, I guess, I guess we got it through. All right, so this is the six gang switch panel that I'm gonna be using. It is much like the aux beam switch panel that a lot of channels use or a lot of people use, but it's a little bit cheaper. Um, still aluminum, which I thought was cool. Has nice routing for the wires to keep it out of the way. Um, has six options with a dimming uh, spot there, reset button, which I think is really cool. It's actually upside down, but um, it comes with a lot of features. It comes with the fuse box that I have wired into the truck currently, as well as 50 options for different lights, fans, lockers, cameras, a whole bunch of things that I'm definitely not going to use, but we will be using the light bar for the light bar that we just got installed. But it also comes with a metal bracket that you can use to mount it to your dash um, in different ways. I'm definitely not going to drill into the truck because I don't want to do that. But um, it comes with an adhesive that can go, you know, on something like that. So I may go with that option. This isn't the perfect place for it but it is out of the way and might be a good place to mount it. I'm not super certain yet, so I may kind of look around and see what I like best, but um, it comes with some pair spare fuses, which is nice. And then some hardware, which this is for the bracket, which I'll not be using. But this um, pairs up with the wire that I just, um, ran through the grommet so these screw together and have um, a watertight plug you can see the o-ring in there um, which doesn't matter for the inside of the truck but this is the same fitting on the outside as well so once we hook these up then we can mount this somewhere like that maybe I'm not exactly sure because that's round so it's not perfect but we'll figure out something I haven't decided yet but it's a really neat kit. So let me show you guys what it looks like under the hood. All right, so like I said, it comes with the uh, fuse block here, which you've got six fuses. Light bars probably draw the most. So I have it run off the 30, 30 um, amp fuse there. And then you simply just run the hot wire and unscrew this. And it screws in and holds it in place. And then this also has a bracket that you can mount to the side of your vehicle. Like I thought about mounting it right here to the wall. But I think just adhering it in place with command strip will work for now. And I'll probably switch that to Velcro because the command strip probably won't last with the heat. But it has a little tag end on it here, which connects to your um, wiring that we just ran inside. So this is the, you have a whole long chunk of wiring that um, you can run it anywhere in your vehicle. And then it's got a hot and a ground, which you run the hot to a fusible link inside, which we pulled the fuse for the ignition and then plugged it into the fusible link that this came with and then plugged it into the ignition spot so that when the ignition accessory is on, this fuse block has power. So that means we're not using the power of the fuse block. The fuse block isn't powered when the truck is off, so we're not gonna drain any of the battery, which it's not gonna draw much power. Um, so you, you really could, and I've seen people do it, but I just have it to when the accessory mode is on because I'll not be running the light bar if the truck's not on. So I have that run through the ignition fuse and that's how we'll get that running. So pretty easy um, process and you just crimp this hot wire into the fusible link that it comes with and then zip tie some things together. I need to clean this up, but um, then you run the ground to the ground on the battery or you can run it to like a ground on the truck too. And then you have your main hot harness comes out of the fuse block and that's what runs power to the whole thing. And I have that run to the truck's battery just like that. So. 
pretty easy. And then um, you just, I just had to add some extension wire, uh, ran some 14 gauge down through the grill over here through there and then that tied in with the light bar um, that was sent to me by um, Nove site which is really cool and so now we're going to go ahead and try that out and see if everything works okay now that we've made it this far all right so I got the wire pulled through and I'm so pumped with that it came through pretty easily well that's not true it didn't come through easily at all um, you can see a little bit of light through there. I was able to pull on it with a hanger. And when I did that, I was able to um, just snip at the rubber grommet, which really helped um, get it pulled through. Gosh, I need to vacuum the floor. That looks awful. It's hard to do that in the winter. But now we're gonna go ahead and get this plugged into the six way uh, switch panel and turn the truck on and make sure it all works. I'm so pumped. All right, we got power. I freaked myself out because it wasn't working, but then I realized I hadn't plugged it in yet. So let's go ahead and press one. You can see it comes on. Now you can see up here. Light bar comes on. That's so sick. All right, let's go check it out from the front. Look at that. That looks sick. I'm so pumped. All right, I'm going to get this engine cleaned out or the, so I can shut the hood. That looks so good. I'm so amped. Oh, man. Now I'm going to have to add more lights. This is a slippery slope. Heck yes. Let me know what you guys think down below if you guys like the light bar look. Oh, I'm a huge fan. All right. Let me know down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll put up some night photos here in a little bit at the end of this video. And let me know what you guys think down below because I'm super excited with how this turned out. Oh man, that's awesome. I'm finally done with it. So excited. All right, well, I'll see you guys on the next one. Like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, so this is how the truck looks with my normal lights on. And here's with the light bar added. Woo! Shines down there quite a ways. That's awesome. All right, now let's try it with the lights off completely. And then there's just street lights on. All right, now the light bar. That's so cool. I love it. I think I have it set right as well. That's super cool. I'm so pumped with that. That looks so much brighter. Wow. All right, here the lights on. That's great. I'm so pumped. I'm a fan. I'm gonna keep this for, keep a light bar always on my truck. So stinking cool. Thanks to NoSight for sending this out to me. I'm a huge fan in the light bar game. Hopefully we can get some ditch lights and mount them right, right up here, something like that. That'd be pretty cool. All right, well, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.